The Royal Marine recruits of 924 Troop are enduring the most gruelling military training in the world, and it's becoming ever more realistic. Charlie team, go on! In three months' time, they'll be deployed to a real war on the front line in Afghanistan. Oh, no. Oh. But Terry John's world fell apart when he failed a crucial speed march and had to leave 924 Troop and his friends. Now, under medical scrutiny, Terry must face up to a shocking truth. And Second Lieutenant Bertie Carr is already on his way to Afghanistan, just three days after finishing his own training. When the rounds start coming in, then, you know, you've got to take that little condor moment and, uh, and, and make the right decision. I'm ready for it. That doesn't mean it's not nerve-wracking, you know. <laughs> uh, I'm ready. The only way into Kajaki is by helicopter. This remote and beleaguered British outpost in southern Afghanistan is surrounded on all sides by the Taliban. And it's to here that Second Lieutenant Bertie Carr has been posted. Right, the, um, we're getting stood to because uh, there's a bit of gunfire and uh, it sounds like a couple of mortar rounds going off. Um, don't really know what's happening. But this is sort of, you know, the daily thing here. Virtually all civilians have fled the area. Only the Taliban remain, hiding in and firing from a honeycomb of deserted compounds. The first thing I ever did with my troop, we went out on a day patrol and uh, got shot at four times. There were real bullets, you know, sort of going, you hear the, the, the whiz as it passes just over your head and you know it's uh, aimed at you. Yeah. And, uh, it was, it was quite a buzz, to be honest. It sounds a bit sick, but yeah. you get quite a, a, a rush from it. If you go out, I would say, yeah, nine times out of ten, something would kick off. Yeah. Which is uh, great, because we're out on patrol tomorrow, so... <laughs> The 924 recruit troop back in Devon is already earmarked to join Bertie Carr's unit in Afghanistan as soon as they're through training. Today, they're about to attempt the gruelling bottom field pass out. A series of extreme physical tests that have remained unchanged since 1946. Right, fellas, consider yourselves um, quite privileged what you're, you're about to do today, OK? The bottom field assault course is unique. You've all had enough physical training to get you around that, OK? You're all fit enough to get around there now. Everyone feeling good? Sir. Sir. Good These tests must be passed to stay in training, and the recruits face them with varying degrees of confidence. I'm not worried at all, man. Very confident. Shit myself, to be honest. Yeah. Oh, you can only do your best, can not you? Just give it everything you've got. No, I... Just... Another recruit worried yesterday after a fall in practice is James Williams. Yeah, it's just a fuck up your stone. My legs went dead. Did you see me fall? Right, up to attention. Hurry up! Come on, let's go! One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, nine, twelve! The first test, a sort of warm up, is a 30-foot rope climb carrying 32 pounds of ammunition with weapon. Climbing like this puts enormous stress on the arms, legs and stomach. And indeed, already one recruit is in trouble. He has to get both hands onto the silver tape is just an inch from doing so. But it's a stretch too far. 
He's called to come down before he falls and breaks his legs. But that's the thing about training at this level. The prospect of injury is a very real one. Just drop your leg into my hands, OK? Terry John is the case in point. He was forced to leave 924 Troop because of a mysterious problem with his legs that locked in agony when speed marching. It started to tighten up? Yes. Yeah? Yes, sir. OK. You're still smiling, though, which is a good thing. A bit of cheerfulness and adversity. Terry's been put into Hunter Company, where they try to mend broken recruits. When I go speed marching and I get to that point, these muscles don't give me no movement. It's just my, just here, lifting down there, and just plodding it on the ground, just bam, bam, that's all I do. And then after a while, up here it gets tired as well. Like, my whole leg is just not moving. That's just it. It doesn't want to move. OK. Shins are tightened up there, straight, straight away. Yeah, yeah. So start yeah. to do a little bit of exercise, yeah. so we just yeah. reproduce it and it's come straight up. Mm -hmm. So, uh, anyway, it's on the boot tomorrow. I mean, if we look at the mechanics, we can perhaps do some orthotics for his feet to change his mechanics of running. Perhaps there's some mobility work we can do with him. We look at his back, you know, his spine and pelvis. There's a lot that we as physios will want to look at for this. And uh, it's like a jigsaw. We've got to try and piece the jigsaw together. Um, difficult, but we'll do our best. 924 Troop launched themselves on the second of today's four tests, a bone-crunching assault course that has to be completed in under five minutes. But every obstacle is a challenge in itself. Work hard, work hard onto the elbows, Green! Get onto your elbows! This sort of training is preparing recruits for the rigours of the battlefield, and it's battle fitness they're striving for, a robust form of fitness that demands an extra mental strength to withstand pain and injury. Come on, come on, let's go. Let's pull away from these two, smash them up, let's go. Come on, catch him up. Working hard. Keep going. Run across the zigzag wall, don't walk it, run it. Nearly there, nearly there, come on. One more. Let's go, keep going. Let's go. Let's go. Who's that rear leg? Speed it up. That's it, attack it, Aerosmith. Good luck, come on. It's a race, don't be last. <sighs> The 12-foot wall is the end of the assault course. Anyone coming in even a second over five minutes will have failed. Maxwell, stop! Stand up. Stand up. Come on! Immediately after this gut-wrencher, believe it or not, worse is to come as soon as they've caught their breath. For these recruits, of course, training is relentless. But even when they get to the front line, training will not stop. Bertie and his men, preparing for a big patrol into enemy territory, hone some of the skills they might have to call on. One of their most important tasks will be to check and clear enemy compounds, but to do that, they have to get into them. And sometimes the only way is to blast their way in with a bar mine. OK, when you're ready, they stand by when you're ready. OK, song team two, stand by. One. Go. Go. For Bertie, who will be leading tomorrow's patrol into very dangerous territory, this is all a very steep learning curve and a far cry from his chosen subjects at university. I did philosophy and economics at Bristol. But it doesn't really matter where you come from or what you've done. Uh, we have grads, non-grads, um, core commission guys who joined up as Marines and now uh, going commission. Um, got ex-soldiers, teachers. We've got Oxford classic scholars. They come from all over the place. But as a philosophy graduate, Bertie, do you ever have problems squaring your morality with what you have to do? I've thought it over quite a lot, yeah. I'm quite happy in my own mind that um, I can easily sort of reconcile my morality and, and, and fighting. Yeah. The people we're fighting are utter bastards. They don't give a damn about their own, they don't give a damn about anyone. In Kajaki, they were torturing the locals. They uh, do all sorts of horrors to civilians. They're evil. Fire in now! OK, that's when you need to keep your mouth open. Yeah, and your fingers and ears. If you haven't got ear defenders, keep your mouth open. And in 10 seconds. 
Mine practice over. Tomorrow, you could be for real. The recruits of 924 troops start the third of four tests they must pass to be able to carry on training. This one, the fireman's carry, is a 200-metre sprint across muddy ground, with each recruit carrying not only his own equipment, but another fully equipped man on his back. The time limit, just 90 seconds. And start moving those legs. You are not going to fail, Skin. Of all the tests, this is perhaps the most critical, because it's preparing recruits for the evacuation of wounded comrades from the battlefield, a primary duty. Stop making oh, no, fucking no, girly no, faces no, and start no, moving! No, moving! No, stop no, moving yourself! No, Come on, don't no, walk! No, Come on, no, no, steps! No, Come on! No, Always no, no, don't no, stop! Good effort, good effort, good effort. Okay, stand up. Keep going! Go on, William! Come on, Williamson! Beat him in, Williamson! Come on, keep going! Keep driving! Don't stop! Don't stop! Keep going, keep going! Keep going! Keep going. Put him down! Stop now and you're toast! Get in there! Get in there! Walk! Get in there! Come! Come on! Stop driving yourself! Stop fucking whining! Walk! Come on! Drive! Come on, stand up, mate. Stand up. Stand up, get somewhere. Even those that come in over time are encouraged to finish the course. <laughs> but the tests are taking their toll on mind and body. 924 troop, already down from its original 50 members to just 18, can ill afford to lose any more. So Orlando Rogers, the troop commander, is not happy. Not good so far. Not good. No, we've had far more failures than I thought. I thought there might be two or three from injury, but at the minute we haven't passed it today. It's, uh, seven at the minute. That's, I mean, they've got reruns today this week. I'm hoping someone will pull out on the rerun, but not good for a first run. For those who failed, there will be reruns later in the week, unless, of course, they're just too badly injured. But those who remain must face the final and most technical of the tests, the dreaded full regain. The challenge here is to first lose your position on the rope and then regain it, using a strange swivel technique designed to overcome gravity, as well as the prospect of a good soaking. See, quality technique, now you know what's going on. That's it. Relax, fella. Those recruits who pass today will eventually graduate to the Tarzan assault course, an aerial course some 40 feet off the ground without safety nets, in which the ability to achieve a full regain could literally save their lives. Back! Oh. Not throwing the head back, look at the far yeah, yeah. Face. <laughs> Here, so calm down, down. Calm down. Come on, Kirk. Good lad. Well done, Kirk. Right arm down the road. Right arm down the road. Right arm down the road. Beat. Okay. Too early. You're beating too early. Beat. Look up. Look up. Look up. You're not looking up. Look up the road. Oh shit. Eureka. Pass. Pomeroy. 422. Pass. Hogan. You failed the farmer's curry. McCann, you failed the rope and you failed the fireman's carry. Heads up everywhere. Think about why you're here. Those of you who have got reruns tomorrow, if I can come back down here, 
clean slate, different attitude, attack everything that you do while you're down here. Everyone understand? Yes, yes sir! Everyone understand? Yes, yes sir! So go pick up your kit, ball is on the way. Go! After today, there will be more of 924 Troop joining Hunter Company, always full to capacity with over 100 injured recruits. Three of my ribs, my muscle and my spine, so can't really crack on. I cracked on for a few weeks, cracked on for about five weeks, and after I did it, I was one getting nowhere on bottom field, so I had to basically see the PMO and he said, oh, I'll come in on it until it gets better. Nah, honestly, I am proper good to line. Proper good to line. Although the basic Royal Marine training is 32 weeks, that is to pass out as an original member of a troop, statistically the average length of training works out to about 54 weeks. And just how long Terry John will be in Hunter Company is, right now, anyone's guess. If I was to give you a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being, if I hold your hand out like this, got an ice pick and you stuck it through your hand, right. that's a 10. So about a 5 or a 6, a 5 or a 6 that is. So I want you to draw on that person where your problem is. You can shade it. Okay? There's loads of my troop that are injured and you know, it's really hard. Training is a hard thing. Your training is because you start out and everyone wants to finish as an original, but it's only luck that takes you through as an original and you know you're destined to be an original, you will be. Yeah. <laughs> Whether a Marine passes out as an original or not, he is just as likely to end up on the front line. And that's where Bertie and his troop are now sharpening their firing skills for tomorrow's patrol into enemy territory. They'll be covered throughout by gun positions built on top of two nearby mountain peaks, one called Athens and the other Normandy. I hike up to have a look threading my way through minefields laid down by the Russians during their invasion 25 years ago. These mines have already cost one British soldier his life and two others their legs. Yellow dabs of paint mark what I hope is a safe path, but it's tough going in the thin mountain atmosphere. I'm just moving now up to Normandy, uh, following a very well marked path, which we must not fear from because all around us uh, mines have been laid by the Russians so you just don't come off the path that you, when you do at some considerable risk it's quite a yomp every morning the lads have to follow this path carrying supplies for their comrades up here and the gun positions in Normandy. Quite a view as well. Astonishing view, in fact. Uh. Observation point, place where you're supposed to stay protected, ideally stay hidden, uh, where you can see them and they can't see you, and you're dominating the ground. We're here just to give uh, covering fire, protect the dam, um, and the arcs we've got up here with our weapon systems you know, are far better than Taliban. And this is your, your ideal OP. Um, any military person would you know, fantasise about arcs and, and the views like this. Yeah, <laughs> Lim Limpston would love it. Up here, the guys, any guys going on the ground, you've got top cover. So the guys do get to get the warm and fuzzy from being out on the ground because they know all these guys up on the ground here with their weapon systems have got them covered day and night, 24 hours a day. Apart from the all-important top cover, this OP, or observation post, also allows the Marines to build up a knowledge of the enemy, their movements and even their way of life. Directly opposite, you've got Kalawak. Kalawak is the biggest stronghold at the moment, as far as we're concerned, with Taliban. Roger. We're seeing on average between 20, sort of between 10 and 20 packs sort of living and moving around that area. There's no females, there's no kids, there's no nothing. They're quite bold and confident, they're moving out doing fighting patrols, innate sort of man strength and uh, clearance patrols as well, coming down into the southern part of Kalawak. Go directly up from the bend in the river, yep. you've got um, a hill if you like, yeah? Yep. On the right side you can see a lone bushy top tree. Yep. You go slightly up to the right, 
and you've got a square compound on top where we got contacted from there by something either like a wombat or um, possibly RPG we think is wombat. One landed short, basically landed down near Tangy and then the other one impacted just below us here. Right. So we found the firing point, basically hit it and uh, we stopped that attack happening anyway. Since we've been here, we sort of started to build up a pattern of life. And then we found a Taliban training camp, which has obviously been the main thing. Yeah. Um, you see that little build up of trees down here at the blue door? Yep. That compound is a Taliban training camp. Really? They've been doing training for about the last four weeks now, for about three or four days at a time. Doing all sorts of training, um, arrowhead formation, anti-ambush drills, actual ambush drills. We've been watching them, so we've built up, well, we've built up a very good picture of uh, what they're up to. Also, uh, if you go due sort of east of their location, um, we've got possibly a Taliban sort of uh, commander, again, vehicles pulling up, and uh, you know, we see them having chats, passing information, passing equipment over, and stuff like that. I mean, it's just like being in Northern Ireland in that respect, just building up a pattern of life. Yeah. Oh, it's perfect for, for an OP, it's awesome. Up here, the priority is the enemy and their movements. Hunt! Come to the team office. Back in Limston, however, the priority is 1940. And right now, one specific recruit is in deep trouble. On his recent summer holiday, he wore a Royal Marine vest, even though he is still only a recruit. Taking photos of yourself, doing some Chad salute whilst you're in the Royal Marine's vest, it's bad enough doing that, but then sticking them up in your bed space so the training team can see them. What do you think? We're going to be mega impressed that you go and put a Royal Marine's vest on and you're not even a Royal Marine and go and give it massive. I bet you if some chick had asked you in a nightclub if what that badge was, I bet you would have given it massive saying, oh yeah, I'm a roughly tufty bootneck. I do all this, I did all this when I was in training. Wouldn't you have? Wouldn't you have? So why, when you're on holiday ashore, are you walking around posing with your friends and family? Why? Excuse, sir. Okay, I understand that you can be proud of what you do. Blagging in a foreign country where there's possibly a higher security risk is not ideal, is it, Recruit Hunt? No, sir. It's not a thing we do as bootnecks, wear bootneck t-shirts and wander around towns and cities gobbing off about how we're bootnecks. It's the kind of thing honking, gopping people in the army do when they join some cake and arse regiment. We're professional enough, Hunt, so we're happy with what we do and we keep it quiet. We're quietly confident, that's why we do well at what we do, Hunt. When people ask you what you say, Make something up. You don't tell them you're a fucking Royal Marines commander. We don't blag about what we do, Hunt. You suitably embarrassed, recruit Hunt? Yes, sir. Good. Right, away you go. Has anyone got any um, loose ammo? No, mate. Box. Should be one more bloke. No, it's, it's Jackson. He's got. He's getting linked. Full mags only. Make sure everyone. Recruit Hunt survives the grilling and lives to fight another day. This time, along with everyone else on basic ambush drills. When you get to your units, those that are successful and pass out of training, you'll get retaught exactly how they want to do it. And that's part of unit life when you get... 924 there. Troop is now being introduced to exactly the sort of frontline soldiering they'll need to know when they get out to Afghanistan themselves. And you'll know if it's left or right flanking, Delta team holding fast, putting down covering fire, Charlie team into the assault if need be. Charlie team. How much? 20, 23 mags. Remember, I need 23 four. mags, everyone, okay. Uh, hello, Zero, this is Alpha. Four. One, yeah, one, Charlie. It. 23 mags required. No casualties. Over. Roger, I. Out on the baseline now. There is no doubt that the training is now taking on a whole new direction. Fitness is now a given. Tactics is the new order of the day. How to kill and not be killed. Just 10 miles away from the training fields, Terry John has been referred to a civilian specialist in Exeter to help try and establish what the mystery problem is with his legs. Just move your feet slightly further apart for me. Brilliant. Terry remains optimistic, 
but he still misses his old troop, especially as his friends are now well stuck into tactical training for the front line. I should have been there. For all that action in the fields, that's what, that's what you get trained for all the time, ain't it? To be a soldier, ain't it? Not being there with them lads, oh, it would be well fun to look at some of their faces during that attack, honestly. Yeah, the grenades going off and the machine guns going. As if you're like in Afghanistan or somewhere already, oh, yeah. that's the feeling. That's the feeling I long for, like, but... action. For 924 Troop, already diminished in numbers, the training, now getting tougher and tougher, is likely to claim yet more casualties before the successful recruits pass out as Royal Marine Commandos in another 16 weeks. What fire position are you in, fucking Mongwell? Get down, leave the position! Free on, Williams! Only the toughest and the luckiest remain as troop originals, like James Williams, who so far passed every test he's taken. We used to talk about being an original. It was like, yeah, I'd like to be an original just to say, you know, I'm an original. It was a cool thing to do. Now, I'd like to be an original because I'd like to get this over and done with as quickly as possible. Yeah, yeah. Because I uh, fucking... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. When we've done this shit and knowing that Terry, if he carries on and gets through it, it's got things like this to come, whereas we could be through it and done. Get it done, get it over and done with. Lads, keep the rounds going down. Your oppos are assaulting that position. Head two section. We need to push up to the fence, secure up to that fence line and arch to our front. Dirty, hurry up! Two, three, zero, Alpha. This is Normandy. Radio check, Norman. Another day, another mission in Afghanistan. On the summit of Normandy, gunners and snipers stand ready to provide cover for Bertie Carr, who is about to lead his men, known as 11 Troop, deep into enemy territory. The FSG is up there, they've got optics, they've got a sniper up there with them. I'm um, checking out the objectives before we get there. The lads have put it at 60-40 um, odds on uh, contact, so uh, let's see what happens. <laughs> okay, you went over there ready, we'll set off. Let's go. Hello, it's still zero. This is still two zero and alpha. It's cool sign crossing the bridge now. Over. Once eleven troop cross this bridge, they'll be in enemy territory. Can I have an indication of where those shots came from? Already the firing has started. Right now it's indirect and distant, but there's no telling when it might become direct and deadly. Bert is leading a reconnaissance patrol through deserted villages and compounds to gather intelligence on enemy positions. The Taliban, they just lie in position all day, all night, and just wait till we pop out and uh, they can engage us. No, that's all right. Uh, once we're behind Roshan Hill, we're in cover. Lads, get spaced out in the open ground. Space it out. Uh, I'm now about a kilometre away from the compound. Shots have been heard, but I'm not quite sure where they're from. Bertie makes sure that we're all spaced out, a good 20 to 30 feet between us. This is in case one of us steps on a mine or is hit by machine gun fire or rocket-propelled grenade. This way, only one person dies and not a cluster. Three thousand miles away, 924 Troop have just crossed the Channel to start their battlefield tour of the D-Day beaches in Normandy and to get their first taste of core history. Now, the early hours of the 6th June, as we know, this great armada of ships have left UK. At 5.30 in the morning, the gunships opened up and bombarded this coastline with a mass array of weaponry. Not accurate, but enough to shake the enemy and hopefully hit the positions. And they would have to fight their way across the 400 metres of open beach. But they paid a heavy price. And we see these people that pay the price in the cemetery this afternoon. So sheer motivation, determination, bravery, the will to succeed. And that's what we look for in the call. Get contact from the right now. Over. In Kajaki, 11 troop have come under direct fire. Contact. 
ground swinging over our heads. The Royal Marine gunnery positions on the high ground, who can see the enemy from their vantage point, immediately try to suppress them with heavy machine guns and sniper fire. Bertie, just three weeks out of training, must now decide whether to withdraw or push on. Eyes on. Yeah, they're engaging them. I'm happy to crack on because that's... Uh... Right, lads, normally are going to be engaging over our heads, so we're going to crack on to Caligol. Let's uh, get going now. Out. Some of those cool signs spread out of that trench, too, too bunched up there. To reach the compounds they want to search, 11 Troop now has to cross 500 yards of open ground. All right, just keep an eye on them. Well, we move out from here, lads, same order of march, and we're going to move across. OK, if you look to your front, you see the compound that we're heading for? Yeah. We're heading straight for that in single file. The threat as we move across there is obviously to the left, so be aware of that. And as always, just keep looking for your next bit of cover. With covering fire from the high ground, Bertie leads his troops forward. They haven't even reached their objective yet, and already they're coming under fire from an unseen enemy. Laid to rest here in this German cemetery, there's 21,222 Germans. Now, in some departments of France, including this, up to 25% of the German troops were non-German. They were captured prisoners of war, mainly from the Russian states, Lithuania, Poland, Czechoslovakia, Russia. And it was either fight for Germany or die. So they said, well, pass me the uniform, yeah? So we can't always class all of them as Nazis, Hitler, and all the rest of it, yeah? They're fighting for the same reasons that we were. <laughs> now, guys, the main dominating point in the cemetery is obviously the statue and the cross in the centre. And it's a 20-foot high column, and it's the tomb of the unknown. It's parts, bits of bodies that could not be identified, placed into a grave. So they're into the mass sort of grave there. So it's a body just carved up in that? Yeah, yeah. Michael Uregi is from Salford in Manchester, but his Hungarian roots means he has a much more personal reason for visiting this cemetery. I think my great granddad will probably be here somewhere. It was like a colonel or a general for the SS, fight for the enemy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's funny how things work out. Well, oh, yeah. Not like my granddad, I mean, he's he come over to England and settled family here, so you never know what'll happen in the next 60 years. I think it highlights sort of the losses on, on both sides. We can't just go to all the, all the American and, and British graves. It highlights you know, the mass losses on, on both sides. German and British, so the first time I've been here, it's quite interesting. I think also, especially this one, um, a lot of the plaques just say, you know, one German soldier, two German soldiers lie here, you know, ne never identified, never never letters home to anyone back home. Kind of, kind of the scale that the whole operation was on. And, uh, so it's quite an important part, of sort of core history, sort of uh, Royal Marines history and traditions of the, of the amphibious raids on, on D-Day. They must give them pride in their past. Oh, definitely, yeah, definitely. Stay spread out, so spread back. Whenever you're ready, call Jackson. Crack on. <laughs> Three Barney keys to kill rear. Yeah, actually, yeah, yeah, you secure rear. Oh, I'm just hoping that I'm on the left, I've got eyes on our position as well. Find some movement of it. Royal Marines officer Bertie Carr and his troop have arrived at the enemy compounds that need to be searched. Now it's a matter of getting in. Jacko, can you kick those doors in? Will they come off the hinges over? And three drops will be so known firing position, kick it in. Five rounds on that target and then we uh, went to... Let's back off. Almost immediately, the Marines find evidence of enemy activity. Shell in there. It looks quite into its own. There's a shovel beside it, there's a shovel beside it. I wouldn't touch it at all. We've got a possible firing position, um, which was definitely hidden. It's got arcs onto uh, our location and our patrol routes over. As you can see, we're now stood in the Allied war grave at Bayeux. More importantly for us, there are 152 Royal Marines buried in this place. Okay, 
Now, people will make a lot of the Royal Marines being elite. Being elite isn't just about the training you receive, it's all about tradition as well. One of the biggest traditions we have is the tradition of family. You are part of something special, right? And we pride ourselves in looking after our own and our family. Now, these guys that lay here today, they are dead, but they are most definitely not forgotten. And they will never be forgotten. I would like you to place your cross on the headstone of a Royal Marine. Here, look. He's 19. He's 19. I didn't show us this on the recruiting video, or did they? <laughs> 21, jeez. Same name, same age. Yeah, hope we don't end up like this. Years do not darken nor shadow the only beautiful memories we have of him. Which makes you proud. So whatever happens, you know, you'll never be forgotten. That's important. I put one on a sergeant who was my age, 24, sergeant, and he, he was the 6th of June, but he died. I mean, I don't know how he died, but, you know, the 6th of June was the landings, wasn't it? And to, you know, just come straight off and that's it. I think that's pretty, it's pretty bad, you know? The uh, casualties in Afghanistan, not just us, them as well, I mean, they're fighting the war too, aren't they? I mean, you got to give anyone respect if they're fighting for their own country. I do anyway, I mean, some people might not, but I do. In Kajaki, Bertie Carr and his troop continue to investigate and map suspect enemy positions, knowing they could be targeted at any time. Yeah, a couple of spent uh, cases in there. Spent cases? Yeah. What size? Big, fucking, bigger than 0.5. Called Jackson. Uh, just off to your left. There's all these little uh, huts and things. One looks a bit suspicious, got a little curtain on it, like a lying up position. Can you go and uh, check it out? Any one of these dwellings could contain Taliban fighters. No chances are taken. We're coming down through a town called Caligal, which uh, we know has been used um, as a as firing as a firing positions, enemy firing positions, with small arms and mortars. You see the mortar arms there, and so we just come to uh, to push down and, uh, and check if we can find these firing positions. And uh, just to dominate the ground, show that we can, you know, come out and, and uh, yeah. sort of uh, walk around freely. Um, and uh, yeah, so we're just checking suspicious places. Nothing suspicious in there. There's a couple of badminton rackets around the back. Boss! One of the patrol notices some disturbed earth and thinks it's discovered an enemy firing point. Sorry? I mean, this is a suspected firing position of, of uh, enemy mortars. So. 81mm M. That sounds like a weapon system. That's definitely a weapon system. Right. But if you look at the the the, uh, the stone wall, the closest to us, directly behind it, there's a small green hill. Yeah. Top of that, every so often, there's somebody that pokes his head out, quite clearly in black. Essentially, to the left-hand side of the peak of that hill. I'll keep an eye on it. Yeah, yeah seen. Keep eyes on. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. We're getting dicked from the north. Uh, we're just checking it out over. Terry John, so desperate to be part of the Royal Marine family, has been told to report to the principal medical officer about his legs. But I'm just going to show you something, OK? This is the lower leg. All of the different muscles are encased in a special sheath or bag. Unfortunately, what happens in some people is the muscle swells up and there's nowhere for it to go, and it becomes very tight and very painful, and that's, what, that's why you're getting pain and numbness in the legs. Yes, we call it compartment syndrome. It is possible that, along with some physiotherapy, we can make this better, okay? But it's, it's a pretty tall order, I better tell you that right from the beginning. It's actually a difficult condition to treat 
It's not something that you can just say, oh, I'll put a pair of inserts into my feet and magically I'll be better. It's, it takes work. Okay, crack on. Okay, so thank you very much, sir. If you get compartment syndrome, no matter what we do, quite the large majority end up out of training. Unless he's very lucky, it's not, good. It's not a good outlook, I'm afraid. It's a shame, but there we go. I'd love to, you know, go home, get married and all that, knowing that I have the green berry, knowing that, you know, my kids are going to, you know, come get born and find out their dad and his lot, Royal Marine, doing good shit. It's a tough game. Play it to win. <laughs> Box! Right. It's a ghost town, isn't it? Yeah. Suddenly, the Taliban open up with a burst of fire aimed directly at Eleven Tree. Do you want cover? Let me move around. Five five support of the ground. Can you get up there and see if Wait, you can get up there? Wait, two searching on me! Three seconds, come up to the fire. Cheeky bastards. Contact. Wait out. Is there any chance we can go back around no. to the north and just see if we can flush anyone out? I'll try. Bertie asked permission from headquarters to launch an attack. Smoke knowledge, yeah, just get your ass back. Uh, Two Alpha, Roger out. They're being uh, fucking boring, they just want us to head back in there. Let's go and watch Star Wars. Let's go and watch Star Wars. Star Wars on tonight? Well, we can always put that. No, we watch Star Wars the other week. Oh, we can go um, from Indiana Jones. What about stuff? Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? Indiana Jones. I haven't booked. Pirates of the Caribbean. Can I watch Pirates 2 again? No, no, no. no, no, no. Watch my desk. I've got mine as well. Why do we have to watch that? I've got mine. Can we uh, yeah. try over the side <laughs> of the <laughs> 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 this, this is what it's all about, boss. <laughs> Star Wars. Oh, Star Wars. Yeah, Come on, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? We're going to go back and watch Star Wars. I want to watch Ghost Point Blank. What did I tell you? Fuck, I never get my own way. Sending a fire mission in and all, I think it might kick off. The patrol heads back, at first across dead ground. That is ground protected from direct fire by surrounding hills. Firing right over our head. Once 11 troop reaches the exposed ground, they will have no alternative but to speed march across it. 600 yards under enemy fire. Across this open ground quickly over. We're safe now. The Around's going over our heads, but as soon as we get just up here, about a couple hundred yards, we're in a vulnerable position where we, uh, we had incoming from the Taliban before, so it's, it's kicking off all around us. And uh, at the moment, we're spreading out. Let's move. Bertie gives the order to speed march. The very thing that let Terry John down in training, I now realise could be for us right now the difference between life and death. So hang out for the lads at the back. Good bit of fizz, lads. Courtesy of the Taliban. I mean, Ross, you look like you're at the end of a six miler. Is <laughs> <laughs> oh. everyone in, is it? Yes, sir. All right, yeah. do you want to breathe? Let's get the fuck out of here. All right. We're not doing anything waiting around. But take section on me! After a six hour patrol, Bertie leads his troop over the bridge to the safety of the Marine base. Mission accomplished, and no casualties. It's like an attitude being built up in you of not like giving up or giving in on things easily. Honestly, I see it. While they have their Greenberry, proves that they have that mentality also to like keep on going, keep on going. Proves a lot that Greenberry. It does. <laughs> Separates you from all other men. Normal men. <laughs> this is not normal. Nah. Everything down there. It's a clear, nice day today, isn't it? And uh, if you look over to the west, you see the smoke. Uh, that's the enemy position that's being suppressed at the moment. The fixed enemy in, on that position, they're going to put an airstrike in. Um, I think two 500 pound bombs is what I heard. And then uh, and, uh, hopefully kill them. Still 
It's quite fun sort of patrolling around with it going in over your head. <laughs> the lads laugh at it, but I suppose it's only funny as long as you know everyone walks away okay. <laughs> Terry never did get his green berry. He was eventually medically discharged and left the Royal Marines. I wanted to be a Royal Marines commander. I wanted to be out on the battlefield, you know, experiencing the whole feeling, adrenaline rush, like being out there and, you know, it's your mates that you miss every one of them. That's the hardest part. I love them like brothers, actually. It's like almost a band of brothers type of thing. Back in Derby now, trying to live a normal life, trying to. But 10 months later, Terry passed out as a sapper with the Royal Engineers. Next time on Commando, Bertie is told to defend the northern flank against an imminent Taliban attack. And back in 924 Troop, there's trouble when Adam Collins shocks everyone with accusations of bullying. There's only so long you can be, you know, give it the attitude, well, I'll show them, because it grinds you down. 